We present our techniques of aortic valve repair in adults with congenital heart disease. Adults with congenital heart disease can develop aortic insufficiency, mostly related to aortic annular dilatation. We present two patients. The first is a 22-year-old patient with history of ROS procedure for congenital aortic stenosis and now has severe AI with symptoms. The second is a 21-year-old patient with truncus arteriosus who now has moderate AI aortic aneurysm, and severe RVDPA conduit stenosis with symptoms. The first patient was 22 years old with history of ROS procedure for congenital aortic stenosis and now had severe AI with symptoms. Her BSA was 1.55 meters squared. Preoperative echocardiogram shows a central coaptation defect from annular dilatation. There is severe AI through this defect and is seen in both the long axis and short axis view. Flow reversal is seen in the descending aorta. Reduced anatomy has been performed. Patient is placed on cardiopulmonary bypass. The heart is allowed to eject because of the aortic insufficiency until aortic cross is applied. Cardioplegia is given anti-grade initially with some pressure on the right ventricular outflow tract to decrease the AI and once the rest is obtained aorta is opened and some more direct cardioplegia is given. The aortic valve is now being examined. The central coaptation defect is seen. The Rolled up edges of each leaflet is also seen. This is from the chronic aortic insufficiency jet. The 19 heart ring sizer is placed in the right coronary sinus and fits well. Uh, the right coronary leaflet length also appears adequate. The stipple edges correspond to the commissures indicating good fit. The left coronary sinus is sized with the 19 also and the non coronary sinus also fits the 19 so a 19 ring will be used. Subcommissural marks are placed for accurate suture placement. This suture should be two millimeters below the leaflet aortic annulus junction so there is no contact with the ring with the aortic valve leaflet. Three of the bond sutures have been used here with pledgets. The suture is taken through the post of the hard ring, again in a horizontal mattress fashion. All three commissural post sutures will be placed initially. The heart ring is now lowered below the level of the aortic valve leaflet. Further looping sutures are placed around the ring in each sinus. One to three such sutures may be needed depending on the amount of annular reduction being performed.
the sutures are tied down and the knots are lateralized to prevent any injury or erosion from the knot on the aortic valve leaflet. The valve is now examined. There is prolapse of the left coronary leaflet which will be plicated to raise its effective height. Leaflets are pressurized and there's good apposition. Aorta is closed. Cross clamp was released and patient weaned off bypass easily. Postoperative TE shows mild AI. There's no flow reversal in the descending aorta. Postoperative transthoracic echo also shows mild AI. The second patient is a 21-year-old patient with history of truncus arteriosus and now has moderate AI, thoracic aortic aneurysm, severe RVDPA conduit stenosis with symptoms. His BSA was 1.5 meters squared. Preoperative echocardiogram shows a dilated aortic annulus about 45 millimeters with moderate aortic insufficiency, mostly through the central area of non-coaptation. This is seen both in the long axis and the short axis views. Patient is placed on coliparin bypass using a aortic canal that is in the distal easing aorta because of the uh, aortic aneurysm that was replaced with a 28 millimeter hemoshield graft. After this was done, subsequent cardiopegia was given through the coronary sinus through a retrograde coronary sinus catheter that has been sutured in place. Aortic valve is examined. It is significantly dilated, way beyond the 29 millimeter sizer shown here. 25 heart sizer is shown in the right coronary sinus. The left coronary sinus is way bigger than the 25 millimeter sizer. The 23 millimeter sizer fits the non coronary sinus well, so a uh, 23 ring will be used. Subcommissural triangles are marked. In the commissure between the left and right coronary leaflet, the previous VSD patch from the truncus repair is palpated as a rigid mass and there was some difficulty taking the sutures through this but the three commissural sutures were placed and the ring was lowered below the level of the aortic valve leaflet. Multiple looping sutures were taken through each sinus because of the aggressive downsizing of the annulus. At least two to three were placed in each sinus. Though this is a truncal valve, each Valve leaflet is noted to be thin and pliable and not dysmorphic as seen here. Leaflet pressurization 
shows uh, an abnormally high rad coronary leaflet related to the underlying VST patch that has elevated the leaflet. The left coronary leaflet is prolapsing and so will be plicated to raise the effective height. Left coronary leaflet is plicated multiple times. Now there is good apposition. Left coronary sinus tissue is resected and aortic root is re most to the hemoshield graft, the 28 millimeter hemoshield graft. RV to PA conduit was changed to the 29 millimeter freestyle. Patient weaned off bypass easily. Post operative TE shows mild aortic insufficiency. The annulus is significantly downsized. Post operative trans thoracic echocardiogram also showed mild aortic insufficiency. The gradient across the aortic valve was uh, 12 millimeters of mercury. Echocardiogram at six month follow up shows stable aortic valve function. Thank you for watching, and we will be happy to answer any questions.